If your PlayStation Portable is stuck on a black screen, either using official firmware or the custom firmware from Arc, then hopefully I've got a solution for you. Let's find out. Hi and welcome to Bytes and Bits. If you're having some problems with your PlayStation Portable, where you just can't get past a black screen, then hopefully we'll be able to find a solution for you in this video. So I'm really going to start from the very beginning. We'll just fault find right from the basics. Um, so again, um, as we go through, hopefully we'll come to the situation that you're currently in. Um, but sorry, I'm just going to start from the very beginning. So, so first off then, um, obviously the PlayStation needs some power to actually turn on. So if, if, if you're turning on uh, and nothing's happening, well then obviously the first option there is of course to try and charge it up. Okay, very, very, very basic. So, so when you have your charging lead and you plug that in, you should get a little power LED coming on there. And, and that signifies that it's trying to charge the battery. So um, if that's where you've got to, then just leave it as it is uh, and for, for a couple of hours and that should then charge a battery and then we can go fault finding from there. Now if you're not getting that little power LED coming on um, uh, and if you try using the power switch and you don't get any LEDs coming on, then it's probably going to be an issue with your actual power supply. Um, so um, if you do have access to a voltmeter, we, we can use that. Um, so the outer casing on the power jack is the zero volts and on the inner then we should have our five volts. There we have our five volts. So again, my, my, my power supply here is, is working okay. But if you're not getting anything on that, um, or if you don't have a voltmeter, then do try using a different power lead or a different um, charger and seeing if that solves the issue for you. So um, if, if that doesn't solve it, um, then obviously then there's probably some issue with the actual charging circuitry on the power supply circuitry inside here. But is there a replaceable um, mini circuit board in there, I think? Um, so you should be able to just get a replacement for that and, and fix that problem. But um, on the other side then, so if, if everything is working and you're getting a charging happening here, then the next thing to look at is, so once you've left it for a couple of hours, that should be the battery charged. If you now try and turn it on, and again, I, I, my system, of course, um, is actually fully working here. So if I turn it on, it is going to come on. Um, but if you turn it on uh, and you don't get um, the LED going green, then the chances are that your battery has an issue with it. Um, so you can just simply replace that. So on the back of it here, a um, little push button, which lets you just pull off the battery pack and you then have your battery um, there. And again, um, that, that could be the issue with it. Uh, another thing you can try, of course, is with the battery unplugged, if you then plug back in your power supply. So again, we don't get a red LED on at this point because it's not obviously not charging a battery, but you should be able to hold it on and you should get a green light coming on. And that just signifies that the um, power supply is working and power is getting into the circuit. Um, now, now some, sometimes the um, PlayStation will be able to turn on at that point. Um, my, mine, mine doesn't. Um, but again, um, that just signifies then that you are getting power coming in through your cable here, power getting into the circuit board itself, and then the chances are that it is your battery which you have a problem with. So, so just make sure you replace that. Uh, and, and this is just a, a, a generic replacement battery that I have here. So let me just pop that back in. And we'll get back on with some fault finding. Okay. So we've got our PlayStation Portable here. My, mine is charged up. So again, if, if I turn that on, it, it will actually turn on. So if I do that, um, I do actually get my, my PlayStation coming up and running. So that's, of course, what should be working when you turn on the machine. And you should then get through to the normal system. Now, I'm going to turn the system off. So to turn it off fully, we need to actually hold in the power button until that green LED goes off. So if we just simply click it once, it goes into sleep mode, which is not actually shut the machine down. So uh, if nothing, if this still isn't working for you then, so we've got as far as confirming that we've got power coming in, but when you turn it on, you get your green LED coming on, but nothing happening on the screen. We need to now, of course, um, bypass the normal boot sequence. 
So to do that, we can put it into something called recovery mode. Now this, this will work for both um, stock official firmware or as I've got installed in here, I have the ARC4 custom firmware. So to do that, I'm gonna hold in the right trigger button. Again, I, I must be fully powered off, not in sleep mode. I then click on. So the power comes on. I'm keeping my right trigger button held in. And we should then come into this special recovery mode. So you'll get an, an amount of text coming up on here. So this is my ARC4 recovery menu. And you can see we have various options here where we can get in behind this boot up sequence and we can start to change some of our firmware settings, our plugins and so on. So we can start to sort of turn things on and off. So, so perhaps you were doing something um, bef just before you got this black screen coming up. Um, if you know what that was, you can come in here, turn it back off again and hopefully that will get you back into it. Um, so a number of things we can do here. So if you play around with that, um, see what happens. Um, see if you can get it up to booting itself. If if not, there are some other boot options we have for our ARC4 system. Uh, so again, if, if you're on stock firmware, um, then obviously um, we'll, we'll go with a couple of other things after this, but I'm just going to go through a couple of the ARC4 specific bits now um, while we're here. So I'm going to power back off again. And again, make sure that we are fully powered off. So we're now going to use our ARC system to get into what's known as vanilla mode. Uh, and really what this does, it lets you boot up actually into the XMB, hopefully, um, but still with the sort of debugging and recovery settings. So it, it actually turns off all of the ARC4 features, uh, lets you boot up, um, but um, lets you get in and, and in effect sort of reconfigure ARC um, from behind the scenes. Um, but again, instead of doing it through the recovery mode options, it lets you do it actually on the screen. So the way in which we do that then, again, we're fully powered off again. I'm going to hold in my select button and I'm then going to power on my machine. I'm keeping that select button held in. So our computer's booting up now. So you'll see there is a VSH menu sitting there, which lets us do various recovery and um, other, other um, setups for our ARC system. But again, we have booted now into the XMB. So the recovery system up here, again, we can start to go off and do various things. And again, we've got access to that recovery menu we had before, which lets us then go off and sort of disable plugins, uh, reconfigure our settings and so on. If you want to come out of this, if you press the home button, eventually, if you keep on pressing it, and that will take you out of that menu system. And we should now be into our actual um, our ARC firmware here. And as you can see, we've got access then to our plugins manager and, and so on. So that, that should then, uh, as I say, if, if ARC is running correctly in the background, um, then this should allow you to boot into that. Um, have a play around with your plugins, make sure you've got everything set up correctly. And then when you power down again and reboot, that should hopefully um, be your system back up and running. So there is one other option then with the ARC system. So if I completely power off again. So we're now going to power into what's known as original firmware mode. So the last one there, as you saw, we still had access to the ARC features, even though they were not powered on as we booted up. But if we hold down the home button as we boot this time, this will actually take us into true original firmware mode. So what's happening now is that ARC has been, in effect, taken out of the system completely. So um, none of the plugins are running, none of the firmware is running. We are now on a completely stock um, PSP. As you can see here, um, all of our ARC, our ARC options have disappeared from our system here. So again, th this just lets you boot back in here. Again, we've now got full control over the system. Um, and it, again, it just lets you confirm that the system is actually running. Um, so if, if, if you can boot into this, um, then obviously there's something up with the ARC setup. So that, that, that lets you then do that. And of course, all of these ARC boot modes, uh, as soon as you completely power down and then reboot, reboot back up again, um, it just goes back to its normal ARC settings.
So that should hopefully give you what you need to get into the system. There is one last option in here, which is to get back into initial setup mode. And again, this works then for both the um, official firmware and the ARC firmware. So the way we get into this one then is we, we have to hold down four buttons at once. So we have to hold down our, our square, triangle, select and start, and then re reboot the machine from here. So again, we're, we're fully powered off again. So we're going to hold down those four buttons and then I'm going to turn the machine on. Keep those four buttons held down. And then we have our, our PlayStation Portable booting up. And you can see now we're into the initial setup screens. So this lets us just set up some basic information as if we were just restarting the machine from scratch. Now, all of your uh, firmware mods, if you've been putting them in the games, everything like that, they will still all be there once we finish this setup screen. Um, but it just lets you go back to the start to see if you can get into the system this route. Um, so we just need, all you need to do here is to use the buttons. So I'm just using the um, right button here. So I want, obviously I'm, I'm, I'm in England. Um, we're going to choose our um, time zone. Um, so again, you just go through the various bits and pieces in here just to make sure that you've got everything set up um, and, and so on. Okay, so we can now come back out of here. And that should then boot us back into our PlayStation Portable. And as you can see, we've still got all of our custom firmware sitting in there. But again, that, that is one more sort of bypassing the normal boot up routine to try and make sure that you can actually get into the system to then sort of change any settings, reconfigure your firmware, reconfigure your, your PSP, and hopefully get you back up and running. So naturally then, if, if you've gone through all of these various options uh, and you still have a black screen, um, well, th there's probably something more, more deep, a more deeper issue with your system. So obviously then um, we're not able to um, sort of reboot into the sort of the lower level layers of the operating system. So there's obviously something going on with your, with your console, either some sort of hardware fault or, or some sort of deep corruption issue. Uh, and at that point, really, you are going to need some professional help to try and recover it. But hopefully, um, if you have got sort of just a normal sort of something has gone wrong or some plugins not playing correctly or something like that, this should let you get back into your system, recover it, and then get back on playing with your games. So I hope this works for you. I hope you find it interesting and useful. Please do click that like button and subscribe to the channel for more console modding, gaming, electronics and making projects. I look forward to seeing you again very soon and bye for now. For more games programming, electronics projects and retro gaming, please make sure you like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel and visit my website.